Tube fans, we're back uh, this morning with an episode of the Brotherhood Podcast. Uh, today we have a very exciting guest and exciting conversation. As we're getting ready to start the season, we have uh, newly associate head coach Jay Lucas oh, wow, thank in the you studio for here. You. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate uh, it. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, we have an exciting day today. We wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the secret scrimmage over okay. this past Saturday. Um, talk a little bit about our team because it is a, a secret scrimmage. So right. we'll just um, talk a little bit about you know your takeaways of how we played. Uh, talk a little bit about you know getting into this upcoming week of, of real gameplay, um, and then talk a little bit about yourself so uh, our listeners can can hear more about your story and, and who you are. And then at the end, um, we have a little bit of rom com trivia for you. Corey <laughs> mentioned that you watch a lot together, so excited to see how well you know your your romantic comedies. Oh man, yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to be on here. I thought you had something against me for a while, Ryan. I've been here. You wouldn't. Put me on the podcast. I thought it was because I kick you off the basket every day. You was holding it against me, but I appreciate you for letting me off. Uh, those guards get up there early. They're working. They need they need all four buckets. Me flipping Carwell around the side basket. Thirty minutes before practice starts. Um, okay, let's start with the the secret scrimmage. We were in um, DC over the weekend um, and got our first look at at playing somebody else. Which uh, you've been around it long enough. So I'm sure I. You know, I have as well now. To it gets real antsy at this point in the yeah. year, where teams are and guys are just ready to go and play somebody else. So it's always um, a, a big deal, I think, even though it's just a scrimmage. What were your overall takeaways uh, from our team in particular and how we played? Yeah, I was excited. Um, I felt good about it. You know, the one thing about scrimmaging somebody like them is that they have a lot of pride and tradition in their program so you know exactly what they're going to be about and what they're going to do um i think they're an older team yeah. um, but similar to us and kind of their makeup but just older and i was excited just to see how we would compete against somebody else kind of like you're saying is getting to that part of practice where you know we're watching y'all practice each other and we don't know if we're good or bad because <laughs> you know y'all could be bored of going against each other yeah. uh but it's always good to see some kind of live reps against other teams and and we got a good look at it. You know, I, I'm very um, enthused about where I think we could be and think we could go. I thought, you know, everybody did a good job um, of carrying over stuff we have practiced, and you could see it uh, out there. And then the next part is just cleaning some things up. You know, we do, even though we have a lot of people back, we still kind of have a new team yep. uh, in the sense of, you know, like how we're playing, where people playing, and things like that. So it was interesting just to see how it all worked out. Yeah. How about particularly um, – you know, you're somewhat of the uh, defensive coordinator uh, mm -hmm. on the staff defensively. How did you think we played? And how did you think we were going to play going in? Like you said, it's so different, especially yeah. for me, like when you're playing against each other all preseason, right. you get into certain, you know, things where you're guarding the same guy forever. Right. Teams, you know, form different dynamics. And it's hard to get a better understanding of what we look like when we actually have – five guys on the court instead of 10. Yeah, that was the one thing I was concerned about was how it was going to look defensively. Uh, that was the one thing that really I wanted to see uh, how good we could be. I think we have a chance to be a lot better than I thought, which is a good thing. Uh, but it's kind of like you said, when you're going against the same people and seeing the same stuff every day, you don't really know how you're going to guard things when people do stuff we don't do. Like they did different stuff we never see in practice. Yeah. Uh, so just adjusting to that. But I thought we did a really good job of uh, kind of sticking to our values of protecting the paint. We still got, you know, one area that's a value that we didn't do a good job at uh, that we got to get better at. But uh, I was very I was very happy and very pleased with how the defense carried over. Yeah, th that look was good, cause especially they have a lot of those, you know, we don't have too much in practice of those those guards and wings. They're yeah. backing down, so exactly. it's different than straight line drives, which we're typically used to. Um, any major surprises of the scrimmage from our group? Uh, just the real, the, just how good we rebounded the ball. Yeah. Um, I was very, very surprised by that. I thought we'd be a good rebounding team, but even like the guards coming down and rebounding, um, you know, I, I'll give you your praise right now <laughs> since we're here. You did a great job rebounding. You know, it's kind of expected, but still for you to do it is something that's really appreciated. Um, and that was the one thing I thought that was really good. And then just taking care of the ball. You know, we have two returning guards, but we also have two freshman guards. So, you know, when you put freshmen out there in their first <laughs> live reps and live action against someone else, you never know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, but they did a good job. It's Yeah, you mentioned that. And it's for some reason, I always feel like the, the nerves for this, this you know, first closed scrimmage get to me more than even, I think, like the first couple of games. I was going to ask a question about how much coaches value this closed scrimmage in terms of thinking about roles and minutes and all that because it is the first 
you know, time you get to play somebody else. And yeah. for some reason that always clicks in my mind and makes me, I feel like I'm more nervous for the close scrimmage right. than I am for like the first few games of the season. Yeah. Just because it is like months of going across uh, against the same people yeah. and you finally get to do it. How do you perceive that as a coach? Uh, it's the same thing. Like you go into close scrimmage like with a plan <laughs> of like, all right, we're going to play these guys certain minutes. We want to see these lineups. Want, and then, you know, after the first time out, it's all out the window. You're just trying to win, yep. which is not, shouldn't be the case in a close scrimmage, but the competitiveness kicks in. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing I do value about the close scrimmage. Like I watched a bunch of games yesterday where they were like these live exhibition, yeah. kind of what a close scrimmage would be at, yeah, like Kansas, Illinois, and all these other teams playing big time games. And, then down the stretch, it's like a real game. You know, yeah. they're only playing certain people, playing 30 minutes and stuff yeah. like that. So, you know, for us, we want, we really wanted to get a look at some of the, you know, some of the guys who um, are younger, uh, mm -hmm. who haven't played in the game, some of the freshmen, um, like I talked about earlier, but also some just different lineups uh, because we have a team that can be very unique in the way we play. Uh, so we were trying to really get to that point, but then it came to a point where you're just trying to win the scrimmage. So then yeah. it kind of – gives and takes are those public like exhibition games new i feel like that's a very new trend i don't remember it that is. happening very often all of a sudden like we're on the you know playing at home and tyrese is like watching the, the arkansas game yeah and, and, and like yesterday everybody's watching the kansas game i was like what's going on <laughs> is that that's got to be a new trend yeah right? it's a new trend um i think in the last year or two really mm -hmm. uh to be exact there's uh this kind of you can do an exhibition against another like power five or somebody if it's for a cause yeah so everything yesterday was for maui and the fires that happened there yeah. um and this is something that's gotten pretty big here in these last two years like you said and i think next year is like even more games and they're returning games and stuff like that yeah. so it's almost becoming like a live scrimmage almost do you see us doing anything like that in the years to come that's a good question um I hope not. <laughs> you know, from it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's it is. A, it's, it's just different. It takes away from you know getting focused on the season. Game still doesn't count. It's on TV. Just so much more that comes with it when that happens. Yeah. Um, I still like the kind of the closed scrimmage because you can really control some of the stuff. You can do different segments like we yep. did. Uh, so I think you get a better better look out of that than an yeah. uh, exhibition game. Last question for you. I'm sure you've rewatched the scrimmage uh, a couple times now on film. Yeah. Anything that you saw on film that you didn't see in person? Uh, yes, there's a lot. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> the one thing um, that's really a good sign is I, I think we played really good, uh, but I also think we did so much stuff and we can take a bigger step, um, both offensively and defensively. I just think, you know, some of the time and stuff, like uh, just offensively, I thought you and Flip were open a lot and we missed y'all. Uh, mm -hmm. The guards were just kind of panicking and, doing some things that they shouldn't do and just waiting to get the ball inside. Um, and just little nuances within the game like that, just things taking, you know, just taking our advantage and really using it throughout the course of the game. I didn't think we did a great job at that. I think that's something we can grow on and be better at. Yeah. Um, and, okay, so now, you know, last week close scrimmage, this week exhibition game, yep. and then Monday go time with uh, home opener. What do we still need to do and improve and work on in this, you know, this last week or two before we get games fully going? Obviously, we'll continue to work on stuff right. and improve, hopefully. <laughs> yep. But um, what are the biggest things we need to, um, you know, correct before we get going? Here? Uh, I think, you know, like I said, uh, just really continue to move the ball and look for our advantage uh, offensively. I think it's something we can really get get better at. I think going good to great. You know, we can pass up. We're getting good shots, but there's also one more pass or a dump off or something that can get us a great shot. And then defensively, um, you know, the biggest thing for us will it'll be the same almost every game. You know, keeping teams out of paint, keeping teams off the foul line and protecting the three yeah. um, and eliminating those attempts and makes. So I think if we can clean that up um, this week and going into the first game, I think we'll, we'll have a chance because we got some big games out the gate. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we got to – Got to be pretty close to full go, you know, <laughs> coming up. So yeah. you got to get ready. Uh, and you mentioned, I know, defensively is obviously one with, um, you know, our team looks different without Derek down there yeah. protecting the rim. But I was going to ask about how we're different this year compared to last year and just your thoughts on that and how we're going to, you know, approach that. Yeah, I think the, uh, the difference is we can do a, a, a lot more defensively this year. Um, and, and I say that when we lose Derek Lively, who's probably towards the end of the year, maybe defensive player of the year. Yeah. But still, I think we've done a good job of really protecting our paint. I think we can 
you know, really rotate, really scramble. Um, and then I think we could put out there five guys who can guard the ball. Yeah. Uh, so that will eliminate a lot of things that offensive teams look to do and try to take advantage of. So as long as we can continue to do that, and, you know, biggest thing is not fouling when you're doing all that stuff. Yeah. If we can continue not to foul and keep teams off the free throw line, we'd be pretty good. How valuable is that five out? You know, we've we've been working on a ton, I feel, in practice where we're switching all five guys. When you talk about what it takes away, can you just delve into that more and how valuable it is to be able to to do that? You know, with Derek last year, I felt like there was times where Derek would get switched onto a point guard and I'd feel more confident that, like, you know, there's nothing that this kid would be able to do because Derek can so long, obviously, protecting the rim, but also, you know, deep threes. Um, So can you just dive more into that, how valuable it is to be able to switch Yeah, it's very guys. valuable. You know, it, it takes teams out of their rhythm of what they can do. You know what I mean? I think the one thing about it is, you know, you go in with a game plan and teams start switching everything and then you just start to do stuff you don't practice. Like yeah. most teams will start to like just look in the post because it's a guard down there or start to play one-on-one. So it can kind of break the rhythm of the game. I think it's something you can't do the whole game. Uh, unless it's really affecting the team, I think you can just kind of hit it in spurts. And, mm-hmm. you know, you've been most impressive guarding the ball, right? You know, you've done a good job, too, as well. So, you know, yeah. don't be shocked if you're on a few point guards. <laughs> not, not, not something I'm looking forward to, but um, we'll see. And then you mentioned uh, some huge games out of the gate. Yep. Uh, how about a uh, game you're most excited for this year? I'm most excited for all of them, but I think uh, the Arizona game at home, just that being an early Prime time home game, um, just seeing what Cameron will look like. Um, a team that I don't know if they've ever been here before, yeah. uh, but, you know, they're another program that has a great tradition as well. They're another team that has a fairly new head coach and who had success in a while. Um, and for me, being a defensive mind, they're one of the best offensive teams uh, since Tommy Lloyd has been there. Uh, yeah. So just trying to find a way to slow them down and, you know, eliminate some of their points. Uh, so it's exciting in that sense. And then, you know, also give us an early look of, yeah. of what it looks like. And hopefully, you know, we have a great year, and that should be like a Elite Eight, Final Four caliber game. Yeah. Um, and this is different from last year. You know, I don't I want to say our first, like, big Power Five game last year. It was Kansas, fourth or fifth yeah, game uh, of the year? Kansas, yeah. I think it may have been third. Third? Yeah. Oh, okay, so I not much so. difference. But yeah. – um, how intentional is it to get some of these, like you mentioned, Final Four, Elite Eight, you know, games this early in the year? Ooh, you know, I'd rather it be like December, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, but I think for the team we have this year, it'd be pretty good. Because uh, like I said earlier, we do have a lot of guys back um, who have played in some big games. Uh, so I, I, it's exciting. I, I mean, it's not exciting to have Arizona and Michigan State back-to-back, but I think we'll be all right. Yeah, absolutely. Um Let's move into you personally. Uh, I obviously want to try and give, you know, part of the premise of this podcast is to give uh, our fans and listeners some insight into uh, the personalities and the, the individuals that are a part of the brotherhood. Um, Let's we'll start way back in your playing career. So you start your career at, not way back. I shouldn't have <laughs> I said way it, back. Nah. Uh, start at Florida, play yeah. at Texas, play a couple years uh, professionally, mm-hmm. and then move right into coaching. Can you talk about your decision to get into coaching? Is it something you always – obviously, you come from a basketball family. Right. Is it something you always wanted to do? Uh, yeah, something I always wanted to do. I didn't think it was going to be at 24. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was the one thing I wasn't really prepared for. Um, and you kind of just have to – kind of just roll with the punches. Uh, huh. And when I got the opportunity to go back to Texas, which was, you know, my alma mater um, – and go back and work for somebody I respected and played for in Rick Barnes. It was hard to say no to because yep. I was, you know, kind of getting tired of the eight-hour bus <laughs> rides in the G League. Yeah. Uh, so that sounded a lot better going back and trying that. So it became something that I just – the opportunity I couldn't pass up. Absolutely. Um, and then let's fast forward, uh, pass around a little bit. You're at Kentucky. You make the decision uh, to come to Duke. Obviously probably a very tough decision. You were there yeah. only two, two seasons? Yep, right? two years. Uh, what was behind that, and how did that go down? Uh, really, the biggest thing behind it was John. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was at a another basketball school, um, worked for another Hall of Fame head coach who mm-hmm. was great in his own sense. Um, but the opportunity to come to Duke, uh, which was in Durham, where both my parents are from. Mm-hmm. I have a bunch of extended family here, and then the opportunity to work for a younger head coach, um, something I aspire to be and kind of get a – you know, a front row seat at some of the things hopefully one day I'll have to go through um, and experience myself and being able to help John along the way. 
as much as I can as well. But, you know, he was really my selling factor in coming here. Opportunity I got to just sit with him, talk to him over that time frame. Um, it made it an easy decision in my mind. Yeah. Um, can you talk more about that? Obviously, you mentioned it, but you've played for and coached alongside some Hall of Fame coaches, some yes. really high-level guys. What about Coach Shire stands out to you um, and makes you feel confident coaching next to him? Uh, just that, you know, for him to be a first-time head coach and his age, there's no, like, um, there's no gap in, like, experience. And I think this is one thing that is kind of – going to be the direction the game is going, um, especially for guys who played at a high level. Um, and he was one of those guys. He's won in everything he's ever been in, you know, mm -hmm. assistant coach national championship, player national championship, state championship stuff. He has just the pedigree and these qualities about him. Um, and I think that's the one thing that you always will look at is like, oh, he's a first time head coach. How would he do? You know, he's never been in these situations, but he was kind of you know, it was kind of made for this type of seat, this type of environment. Um, and it was, you know, when I got here and just being around him and seeing how he works and his approach to everything is, is just is really impressive. Did you play against Coach Ryan College? I did. No, really? not in college. We oh, played in high, uh, in high school. Yeah. Love. Were you guys the same year coming out? No, he's a year older. I was playing up because okay. I was better than him. And, uh, <laughs> How'd it go? Uh, we lost. Oh. We lost. We did lose. It was uh, my first tournament playing up. It was like Boo Williams' big Nike tournament. Okay. Um, and he had a really good team. Uh, they beat us like – he hit like a late three, uh, and they beat us. And he still – you know, he remembers everything, so I hear about <laughs> it like every other week. That's great. Uh, I read on Wikipedia that you were the first Duke <laughs> assistant coach that didn't play for Duke in 30 years. Oh, man. How does that feel? I, well, it's impressive that I made it to Wikipedia. Uh, it felt – it was good. Your Wikipedia page is pretty good. Is it? Way, yeah. Oh, I don't know if you're – I don't know if you're the I one have, writing I'm stuff in there. I'm going to have to look it up now. Yeah, maybe my wife, <laughs> but not me. Um, I'm going to have to uh, say it was it was something I definitely thought about in taking the job mm -hmm. um, because this place is so special, and it has been like this, almost like this fortress. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's hard to get in. Um, and you always worry about when you are – perceived as an outsider or something like how you'll be accepted but you know I could tell right away uh one John made it easy but also just getting here and being around everybody who's been here for a while um you know like Coach K and his family yeah. um, getting used to them see well the way he embraced me uh Emil the same everybody who's been here for a while uh you know so it made it easy seamless transition for me and my family after one season, only one season, you're promoted to associate head coach. Um, can you talk about what that means to you? And also, for me, explain to me what an associate head coach <laughs> is. That was also on Wikipedia. Yeah, that, that's a great, that is a great question and a question that should be on Wikipedia. Um, you know, it meant the world to me uh, because it was unexpected. It wasn't something that, um, you know, I saw coming and John kind of set me down and talked to me about it. Um, and another thing that was really special because – uh, Coach Carewell had held the title also, uh, mm -hmm. and he kind of gave his blessing as well. So that meant a lot, you know, more to me than John giving it uh, one because of how I feel about Sewell, and then that kind of showed me how he felt about me. Uh, mm -hmm. So I appreciated that. And really, to be honest with you, the biggest thing in the title is just being able to take some stuff off of John's plate. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think after his first year, um, he's kind of experienced some of the stuff that comes with being a head coach, and now he wants to – kind of get rid of some of the responsibilities to um, be able to focus more on you guys and just the team and coaching the team. Uh, so me and Sewell will help him with whatever's necessary in that sense. Nice. Last thing I got from Wikipedia, oh, um, last night when I was writing these questions. You really didn't do your homework, huh? You just went straight to Wikipedia on me? No, well, I did my, I mean, I covered those. I'm just getting you a hard time. <laughs> uh, the, somebody, I don't remember the outlet, had you ranked as the number two recruiter in the nation in 2021 behind only John Shire. Um, known as a recruiter, do you have a strategy or philosophy behind recruiting, or how do you go about um, And what's your thinking process when you're trying to recruit kids? Did he tell you to mention that first line? I didn't know. That was not Straight a Shire. Straight from Wikipedia. That wasn't a Shire text. Maybe he was the one that put it in the Wikipedia I page. See that. Possible? I see that. Very uh, possible. Well, yeah, I don't know you know, how these people come up with these rankings. I think the one thing for me is uh, early on I just had found a system, um, and I think the biggest thing is staying organized, and you have to have a system uh, because there's a lot of stuff that can fall through the cracks in recruiting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, making sure you're in communication with everybody, with the recruit and everybody around him, 
um, making sure you're just kind of being everywhere at once and you're not there, uh, you know, so they can't never say, oh, I haven't heard from Duke or, you know, I don't know what Duke's yeah. thinking or, you know, stuff like that. So I think the biggest thing is just I'm super organized. Um, I can get like a... Like if one thing's messed up, like I, all my stuff is like color coordinate, <laughs> color coordinated and stuff. And so like if something messed up, I like start to panic and freak out. That's like my one little thing. I'm like real, real, like just strict about uh, yeah. is my recruiting stuff. So um, can we move into the effects of the the prevalent basketball family you're from? Obviously, you mentioned yeah. your parents are from Durham, but. Mm -hmm. So much basketball legacy in your family. Can you talk about that, I guess, coming up and the, the, the effects it's had on you? Yeah. I mean, uh, I would say my first mentor, my first, like, coach was my dad. Uh, and, you know, the one thing you realize as you get older, and you realize this too, is, like, some of the lessons you get from your dad really don't kick in until you're older. Uh, so, you know, like, some of the stuff he made us do in the gym, like um, – you know, we'll be working out all day, and then after workouts, he'll make us, like, put the younger kids through the drills and stuff like that. So, you know, yeah. he was planting the seed of us being able to teach the game at a young age. Um, so that was, like, one thing I really, really appreciated from him, along with everything else he's done for me just as a father. Um, and then also my brother, just yeah. being somebody to look up to. Uh, he was really the reason I started playing basketball because I wanted to be like him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and follow him and be around him in the gym and just do what he does. Uh, so, you know, those two really were the ones that kind of, you know, planted that seed. Uh, and, you know, it helped that it's always around. You know, yeah. my dad being a being a coach also and always going to the gym and being in locker rooms and stuff like that um, really helped me get to this point. But it's kind of – it's a family business. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was kind of passed down, and I just tried to do my best to <laughs> keep it going. Yeah. Uh, are you still uh, – is your dad still in Houston? Right? Yeah, he is. Uh, are you able to still kind of bounce ideas off him? How frequently are you trying to get advice from him? Still yeah, he's age? probably – if something comes up, he's one of the first people I call. Really? Or even, you know, he calls me – he's an early riser, so like 5.36 a.m. I get a call from my dad, <laughs> and it could be some random. Um, like he'll watch the game, and then he'll come with his, you know, his thoughts and ideas and stuff. Or if I'm having problems with something, I can call him. And uh, same for my brother. He's coaching now. You know, he's in Phoenix with the Suns. So he's another person I can call and just yeah. try to get some new ideas from and stuff. So they both are, are a big part of, of my everyday everyday life. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to quickly move into a uh, another off-the-court segment, quick hitters here. So okay. give you a quick question. You're thinking quick on your feet here. All right. You ready? Are these the rom-com questions? No, 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 no. All right. You'll, you'll know when the rom-com right. questions Okay. Are. Um, favorite all-time athlete, Kobe Bryant. Really, I didn't. I always ask this though. Are you? I didn't even know this. Are you a LeBron or MJ guy? Ooh, <laughs> I'm yeah. a fifty-fifty guy. Oh, I have a controversial take here. I am one of the people where, like, if someone says LeBron is the greatest basketball player, I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm not a just gun co okay. dead set Michael Jordan person. So I'm. I guess I would lean more to towards LeBron, but I just I can't say that on camera. I mean, I just did, but I really don't want to. But, you know, I'm 50-50. Um, what, what would LeBron have to do? What if he gets a ring this year? Is that going to put him over the, the hump? Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, what he's done already puts him in the argument. Yeah. Um, you know, he's won a championship on every team he's been on, all-time leading scorer, and you wouldn't even say he's a scorer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, his impact, he impact, his impact on the game is just he can play all five positions. I mean, I could go all day about LeBron, <laughs> you know, but he is uh, – I don't think we'll see anybody close to him for a long time. Yeah. Not in year 21 doing No, but, you know, doing especially what he's doing. doing that. Favorite movie? Ooh. Uh, Dark Knight Rises. Okay. Nice. Uh, sport you think you would have played had it not been basketball? Tennis. Mm -hmm. uh, also, on the Wikipedia page, I didn't know your dad <laughs> played uh, tennis in college. Yeah, he played tennis in dual college. Dual athlete. That's he pretty was. impressive. He was. Dual athlete, dual All-American. Uh, it was the first sport he taught me and my brother. Wow. It was tennis, even before basketball. Okay. Uh, so that was my first love. Are you the best tennis player on staff when by you guys far. are going out there to play? Yeah, by far. And but you that, lost a meal, right? Huh? You lost a meal as your partner. I did lose a meal as my partner, both in tennis and basketball. So, <laughs> you know, really basketball, I took the biggest hit because uh, you could just get a ball or a meal and get out the way. Yeah. Uh, so I really miss him in that sense. But also in tennis, uh, 
we never lost. The post practice uh, scrimmages <laughs> with with you guys have definitely it's definitely taken a, a tone down oh. without a meal there. You don't hear him screaming at at all after calls and, yeah. and scream at the managers. Yeah, and, it's not the same. He's, uh, going back and forth with, but uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, favorite food? Um, uh, Mexican. Okay. Like, nice. Uh, go off that favorite restaurant in Durham. Favorite uh, Cuchiolos. Yep. And Juju. It's kind of a tie, but I would say okay. Cuchiolos first. Nice. Uh, and lastly, current show you're watching. Uh, <laughs> um, current show I'm watching is. Ooh, good question. I've been watching. Uh, Yellowstone. Okay. Like rewatching it, catching up on that. I've mm-hmm. been watching Chosen, um, which is good as well. I would say those two have been the ones I watch. Nice. I haven't seen either. Yeah, they're good ones. You never seen Yellowstone, right? No. What are you doing? I don't. Yeah. You not I've a TV been, person? No, no, no. I'm a TV person. So what do you want? Backed up. Uh, True Detective. Okay. You know? That's a good one. Um, not, the first season was the only good one. That's what everybody says. I, I don't know why I was hesitant to watch it because I thought, like, why would I watch a show that. Only people only care about the first season, but right. I didn't realize that it's not connected. Yeah, it's not connected. Um, so yeah, I've been making my way through that. Okay. Um, but okay, here let's let's get into it. Most okay. important part of this this podcast, the the rom com trivia. Okay. The five questions. I'm kind of nervous um, about these. They they shouldn't be too. Corey and Rachel have worked with me. They they said that you should be able to. Okay. I'm expecting you to do pretty well. All right. And I'll remind you now that I've I've reminded the past few guests that nobody has gotten a five out of five. <laughs> Yet. Okay. And I've done trivia for everybody. What's the here, high so. score? Like three? That's a good question. It might be three or four. Okay. All right. Um, okay, number one here. I'll give you a couple options for this one. All right. You came up with these questions? Mm-hmm. All right. I did. Well, Wikipedia, yeah. Got you. Uh, number one, what is the highest earning rom com of all time? Give you a couple options here. All right. Hitch. Okay. Pretty Woman. Ooh. What Women Want or My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Ooh. Definitely not hits. I'm saying either Pretty Woman or My Big Fat Greek Wedding. I'm gonna go with Pretty Woman. It is my my Big Fat Greek Wedding. Dang. 241 million lifetime earnings. Really? And then it's Good what Woman Want, then Hitch, then Pretty Woman. Yeah. So. Good movie. Good movie. You ever seen it? I have not. <laughs> I gotta get on my I gotta get on my rom com yeah, grind. Yeah. Give you some uh, diversity around. <laughs> You should get this one. Number two, in love and basketball, what university do Monica and Quincy attend? Oh, USC. Yep. yep. One for two. Um, Rachel came up with this one. This one's kind of hard. Last time a rom-com oh, won the Oscar for Best Actress. Did no options. She just, just fill in the blank. All right. Last time for Best Actress? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. I'm going to say... Uh, I'll give you the... Well, go ahead. Take a guess. This is hard. This is hard, right? Well, I've never seen it, but... I mean, that doesn't give me <laughs> much to eliminate. You haven't seen anything. Um, best actress. I think it's recent. Really? It's not The Notebook. She has a one. Mm-hmm. I'll give you the actress. Can you name the movie? Okay, give me the actress. Or do you want to do it the other? No, I'll do this one. Yeah, give me the Jennifer actress. Lawrence was the winner. Do you know the movie? No. Mm-mm. Silver Linings Playbook? Okay. I've You've only seen it? seen it once. Okay. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't a big fan. Right. Interesting. But I respect it. Uh, number four, name two of the ways described in the movie to lose a guy in 10 days. Two of the ways? Yeah. Great movie, by the way. Uh, definitely a top five rom-com on my list. Uh Clingy, yep, is one of them, and the second would. I'm gonna use Clingy as I have down using we, us, and our references after only one date. Yeah, so that's gonna be in the Clingy category. Yep. Um, I don't. I can tell you. I don't know what. The other one would be like uh, leaving stuff over, like she would move stuff in. Uh, she like brought a fern, nicknames. Yep. Yep. Uh, what was that? Uh, imposing her personal taste in entertainment and food yep. on him. I'll take those two. Yep. You could have also said creating a, hypoth- a hypothetical photo album of her future wedding and children. Yep. Initiating a relationship with Ben's mother without asking him. Yep. Invading his guy's only poker game. Yeah, that was but, a big one. Have you seen 10 Things I Hate About? I have not. 
Oh, that's the list. Man, you're making me feel old. Have you seen any rom-coms? Mm -hmm. I've seen The Notebook. Okay. Uh, Crazy Stupid Love, I think, is the best. Really? I, th I like Crazy Stupid Love okay. a lot. The last, last question has to do with the proposal here. Oh. Um, that's from my wife, I already know. <laughs> it should be a pretty easy... Why does Sandra Bullock feel the need to urgently marry Ryan Reynolds? Because she was going to get deported yes. uh, back to Canada. Yes. Because her visa ran out. Absolutely. Um, I think that's three for five out of you. Not a bad performance. No. The, the first one got me. Silver Linings questions. Yeah, that was, yeah that's, that was... That's a, that yeah. was Rachel. Um, you mentioned, though, can I get your top five rom-coms? Top five rom-coms. Um, the Proposal. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen it. I've seen it. You've seen it? Yeah, yeah. What did you think about it? Oh, it was great. All right. Um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Um, forgetting Sarah Marshall. I'm not. All right. What are you doing <laughs> with your life? Along came Polly? No, I've never even heard of it. Brian. Yeah, disappointment. <laughs> Along came Polly. Well, yes, Ben Stiller, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, I'm sure I've seen like clips. No, you haven't. If you're just gonna owe it, um, <laughs> that's four. My fifth one, uh, you've got mail. Seen one of them. All right. Are they old? Yeah. Have you seen crazy? <laughs> I mean, what do you call? Old? <laughs> <laughs> Are they pre 2010? <laughs> yeah. For okay. sure. For sure. Um, Most of them, I would say, definitely pre 2010. Okay. Well, what I'll year get... were you born? 1999. Okay, makes sense then. All right. I'll mm -hmm. let y'all go. 99. Huh? A 90s baby. December yeah, of 99. Barely, right? Yeah, like 20 days. Yeah, we don't have many of those walking around here anymore, huh? No, I think, I, think, and... I think the freshmen are like 05. Oh, oh yeah, right? they are. Yeah. Just, just Dang, I'm getting old. Tough to, tough to, tough to hear that the 05 oh babies are, are right. in the locker room. I really, know. But, um, okay, well, uh, I know you got to get to a meeting in a, in a big day, but appreciate you coming on here uh, and talking a little bit about yourself and this upcoming season in the scrimmage um so keep keep pushing i'll i'll get on my grind uh, and watch some rom-coms this yeah this week. yeah you have to really i'm gonna give you a list rom-com list and tv show list okay. can't be true to take i can't believe you haven't seen yellowstone that's like a blasphemy almost at this point you even know no. who's in it no um uh, that's hbo isn't it nope it's not HBO. oh it's something weird is it is it like uh, paramount yeah i think so yeah but not weird uh, but different um, yep. Maybe that's why it's hard to watch, isn't it? Or is no, it? it's not. Uh -uh. You're so get a Paramount. I mean, uh, on TV. I think it's like a CMTV or something, whatever it's called. CMTV. Yeah. You mean you cable? Is it on cable? Yeah, it's on cable. All right, well, on cable. You got cable? No. You what? don't have cable? Uh uh. So what are you just straight YouTube and like uh, Netflix? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No YouTube TV. No YouTube TV. You can't. You can't have it. Like my family does, but you can't use it. Uh, you gotta be in like the same house. Yeah, I'm about to ask you a really 99s question. When you watch your shows, you watch them on your phone or on the TV. I try to do TV, okay. but if I'm like in an airport or something, I'll, I'm not. I'm not against watching on my phone. Yeah, that's a new new thing. I I cannot watch any shows on my phone. I only huh. watch shows on TV. Well, um, okay. Well, <laughs> I'll I'll try and get you there. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be versatile. <laughs> And mobile. Yeah, um, I see that. All right. Well, thanks again for being here. Uh, it's a ton me. of fun. And, you know, finally getting on. Yeah. Um, appreciate you. And we'll uh, keep working. Excited to get into games. Yes. And I appreciate you for having me. You do right. a great job. Thanks. Yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> thanks, Jeff. <laughs>